Hey, this is Chrissy from Against the Current, and you're listening to the Rock Sound Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Rock Sound Podcast. I'm Will Cross, junior editor at the magazine. Joining me, as always and forever, Tamsin Wills. Hello. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. How are you, Will? I'm good. I've been on a stag do in Portugal. You did go on a stag do, <laughs> didn't you? Have, I'm, I'm impressed you're alive. If yeah, I'm, honest. I'm surprised the stag, my best friend, is uh, still alive, but he uh, somehow is. Um, but yeah, so uh, first day back at work today, and uh, Mr. Jack Rogers, how are you? I'm all right, Will. I'm doing all right. Um, yeah, I haven't been on a stag do so. You sound perky, though. Yeah, I mean, I am. He's fresh, he's perky. Yeah, I'm fresh. I think I've actually caught up on my sleep for the first time in about seven years. So, like, which which is kind of like you feel fulfilled, but you haven't actually done anything special. You've just kind of done what you're supposed to do as a human being. Lovely stuff. So, so, yeah, I can cope. I can cope. So, I'm feeling, I'm buzzing. Awesome, good stuff. Uh, Well, last week, possibly best episode so far, we had two absolutely amazing chats. uh, One with uh, Miss Chrissy Costanza of Against the Current fame. Absolutely amazing. Revealed so many exclusive to us about the second Against the Current album that's coming early next year. Uh, In fact, we'll be hearing new music by the end of the year too. Brilliant chat. Huge shout out to those guys. And also a brilliant chat with John O'Callaghan from The Main. Absolutely amazing. Playing us demos over Skype. Crazy, crazy stuff. Uh, Can't wait to see those guys later this month live. Really, really brilliant stuff. So even check that out. Check that out now. So this week, we have Mr. Rob Damiani of Don Broco. Uh, revealing some very exciting things about album number three that's coming very soon and uh, potential album names as well which uh, I enjoyed very much and interview two will be with Alex Adam of Rome who also have new album Great Heights and Nosedives coming out in October so uh, we delved into that delved into songs you're going to be hearing how they feel about the album how it's a step up from the debut all sorts of stuff so that's all to come but first Tam's in the news First up, we have Green Day did a Facebook Live performance. It was pretty much just three of them in a room jamming out some songs. It was great. All to raise money for relief for Hurricane Harvey. Um, Mark Coppice, Fall Out Boy and Pierce the Veil are also doing their own efforts. And all the proceeds are going to those that have been affected by the hurricane, which is really, really awesome. Props to them. Sleep On It have announced their debut album, Overexposed. I think it's safe to say we're all really bloody excited for this, aren't we? Big up. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm totally and utterly stoked. I can tell you that now. Um, asking Alexandria are teasing into the fire. So could you just, you know, maybe just hurry up, guys, and get get it out there so we can lose our minds? Um, that would be great. Paris debuted at number four in the UK charts, which is amazing for them. Shout out them for making an absolutely brilliant record. Travis Barker played dra- drums for the Fever Live in LA, which is just insane. Um, and they, uh, the Fever also released a new song, Hunting Season, as well. So go and check that out if you haven't already. Sleeping With Sirens played Gossip, the song, for the first time live. Uh, they also have a new song out called Trouble. And Mr. Kellen Quinn is going to be returning to the podcast very, oh, very soon. Yes. So stay tuned for that. Also, our current favorite Australian band, Stand Atlantic, have released the video for Sidewinder. So again, go and watch that if you haven't already. And finally, probably uh, Will's favourite band of all time. <laughs> probably, yeah. Uh, Architects did a, just, just casually dropped a new song this morning, um, which was just blood. It's it's amazing. It's it's so, so good. I mean, like dropping it at nine in the morning, it's brilliant, but also evil. It's cheeky. It, yeah. Well, it was like, I was... Drinking a cup of coffee, and I just saw it. Did your coffee just go like that? You know, like, you, know, like. you know, like in cartoons when it's like you <laughs> like people drink and then just squirt it. Yeah, in yeah, the yeah, yeah. Where they're being yeah. Paid. yeah. I was just and my arms lost all control, and <laughs> like, I was trying to I was trying to click on YouTube to get on there, and it just won't click in. But when I did, oh, what I mean, a banger. And, and like I think the, just the, everything about it is so beautiful. Like the video is absolutely stunning, and. um they they've said online that this is a song that Tom started before he sadly passed away, and they've done their best to finish it off in the way they think 
he would be proud of and i i think i speak for everyone when i say they absolutely smashed it and it is it's an incredible ode to tom and his impressive songwriting that's an absolute banger yeah yeah i mean uh, just yeah to add to that i mean i didn't have data on the train this morning so uh, when i got in uh, the rest of the guys in the office told me that this had happened it was just like I did the same thing as Jack. It was just like, oh my god, and kind of scrambled. To Stop my everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, just an absolute banger. Just you know, they're, they're they're incapable of making songs that aren't bangers. So absolutely amazing. Actually, before we hit record, we were talking about uh, bands. We've each had a. It's like a get out of jail free card. Each of us have had a band that we've had to ban from us, like including in things. We just pick them for like every answer on questions and that sort of thing. So mine are architects. Probably guess Tamsin's. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if I've made it obvious, but I really like Paramore. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, FOB Jack I've never mentioned Fall Out Boy like, I like, honestly you said this to me I've never so annoyed. I, I've, I've never mentioned them. only seven times like the, but but whatever shout out Architects forever and always oh, big and time. also with Architects if you want to find out a bit more about you know what, what the future holds for the band obviously this has given us a little insight um, head to our YouTube channel just search for Rock Sound and you'll find our chats with Sam and Dan absolutely yeah big big up so interview one mr rob damiani we've been excited to get him on the podcast and we we finally got around to it so i brought everything about album three to him and i just wanted to get all the gossip on it and he gave it to me so as you're about to hear album's done you're gonna be hearing a lot more music very very soon they've already released the absolute instant classic that is pretty and technology as well both bangers so um yeah here's rob damiani of don broco on everything album free when we're hearing new music and uh, a little bit of extra information on the cowboy too so here we go thank you for taking the time to come on the podcast uh, very exciting i've got many questions no worries cool so um i guess i just wanted to talk about uh, a bunch of different things really pretty and technology are both pretty different um so is this going to be an album of a real mix of different things yeah i think so it's you know it's going to be um it's going to sound very from track to track but also you know there's definitely i think more of a kind of uh more slightly angrier more energetic kind of just party party theme to it like you know we've written these, these songs for the first time in with a with a live environment in mind um and you know due to that there's like that kind of i guess that that energy that links them all together even though they they can sound quite very um i think you know they all sound loud which is which is really nice yeah, definitely. I mean, especially that riff at the end of technology is like really pretty heavy and like pretty just in general has a fairly like Larry vibe to it. Like, is it going to be, is it going to be quite a, a Larry, as you say, angry album as well? I, th- I think Larry is probably the best word to describe <laughs> yeah, for uh, anything. Yeah. I mean, you know, as, you know, as, as Don Broco, as a singer and a lyricist, I wouldn't say, you know, I list, uh, my lyrics are the angriest lyrics out there. You know, there's there's definitely bands that um, you know have really done the angry thing and made it made it theirs. You know, I'm thinking like uh, saw Architects over the over the weekend and like you know they are an angry band and it's just amazing to see that that kind of passion in in their music. Um, you know, our music is slightly you know it it, it didn't come from that that place originally, um, but as we were writing these songs, you know, we kind of embraced the slightly heavier side of Don Broco. And yeah, Larry is probably the word. Like when it, even if it's not just in the, in the actual, you know, guitar side of things, whether it's, um, you know, the synths we put in or, you know, the drums and the, and the bass and, and yeah, my vocals from that, it's kind of just slightly, I guess there, it's, it's what in your face, slightly maybe unsettling some of it, like, you know, the sounds we're using, we want to, we want to offer people, um, and, you know, make people come away thinking, wow, that, that blew my head off. And I maybe wasn't expecting that, that twist or turn within the song. Um, 
So yeah, Larry, that should just be the name of the album, I think. <laughs> <laughs> amazing amazing um, yeah because like you're saying that kind of unsettling feel like pretties um really unusually structured and i remember the first time that i heard it it was kind of like oh man like i didn't kind of like you say it's almost like curveballs were coming throughout the song like i didn't know which way it was going to go um is that going to be are we going to yeah. be hearing a lot more of that then across the album i think there's definitely a lot more of that um yeah compared to say um yeah, our last two records, which followed more of a kind of pop song structure. Um, in, I mean, a, a lot of the time that does work. I mean, that's why, that's why it works. You know, there's so many songs that are, uh, you know, they do, they do give you what you want when you want it. And it just feels good because of that. But we definitely um, made a conscious effort this time to, to really explore slightly more varied and unusual song structures and, and keep people, we'll keep ourselves guessing as well. That's the kind of, I think the main thing when you're, when you're writing a song, if you can take people on a journey that isn't like, you know, necessarily the, the way they would expect to go, but they still feel that satisfaction at the end of it, uh, then you're onto something special. Um, so yeah, we definitely kind of went down a, a slightly different path in the songwriting uh, to come up with that. So I could say pretty is a good example. But, you know, there's a few more songs that um, just work where they are maybe a bit more straight up and you, you kind of, you find your, your feet with the song a little bit quicker. But yeah, we like, we like mixing it up. Cool. Like in terms of bands that you guys are listening to and sort of influences for the album, that sort of thing. I mean, like, um, cause I mean, I, I, like, as I say, the songs are so kind of unique. It's hard to pick stuff out. I mean, are, are, have you been listening to stuff in particular or has, is this just a mix of everything that you guys love as, you know, for people in a band? Yeah, I said there, there's nothing really, um, you know, that we were necessarily saying, right, this is, you know, this is this is what we want to we want to do. But you know, I think maybe looking back to, to our youth and you know, almost that more industrial sound. You know, um, there's definitely some more that are kind of embracing the 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 sort of angular sort of minimal production that you might associate with bands like Nine Inch Nails, where it's just like really precision with precision brutality, it sounds like super, I wouldn't say like modern, but like, yeah, it sounds like you're almost like hearing sounds um, from like a space station or something, but within rock music, you know, that kind of weird, weird sounds, um, anything like that, that, ever, you know, we'd listen, be listening to, whether it was on a rock record or, you know, something, something maybe more modern or on a say hip hop album. Um, you know, we might bring that to the guys and think, wow, this could be a really interesting to use in, in this particular song. So wherever it came from, really, it was, it was quite, quite varied, um, mixed bag of influences. But yeah, there's, there's never really a point where we think, oh, okay, we'll, we'll write a song like this because this, this band, um, we're listening to a particular band at the minute. It's it's only when we finish the song that we're like, oh, okay, this actually sounds, yeah, this this reminds me of those guys or whatever. Wow, I can't wait to hear it, man. I mean, um, in terms of your lyrics as well, um, obviously, like the pretty lyrics have already, you know, been, become quite famous. Um, are there sort of are there going to be um, some more kind of stories like that? Because I mean, you said you know your lyrics can sometimes they're you know quite fun and tongue in cheek as opposed to like uh, Larry or angry. Like, what what can we expect in that department? Yeah, I think I mean, the, the thing that I always come back to really is is like a, a an internal struggle. Really, that's the, the main thing that I find most interesting to sing about is you know something that's gone on in my life where it's um, you know I've had like these two sides of me opposing, and I don't know what's you know right or wrong. Uh, well, you, you, or you maybe you do know what's right or wrong, but there's something you know pulling you in, in a certain way that doesn't always feel right. So I kind of, I'm drawn to those sort of slightly negative scenarios, really. And that can kind of, I think that can be, that can kind of come across, um, yeah, in a sort of a, a lot of different forms. There's, there's a few more kind of storytelling uh, kind of vibe songs that kind of do remind me of Pretty. Um, and then there's, yeah, there's a few more just, 
I guess going through a more, you know, internal monologue of exactly what I'm thinking in a certain scenario. So, yeah, I never really go in with a plan. It's just um, I've got an idea, have a few phrases, and then I kind of make it work from there. So, yeah, I think, again, like, literally, there's, there's quite a, 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 a you know, variety of mixed bags of, of, uh, of sort of ideas on this album. So, um, you know, as we're piecing it together now and choosing the songs, it's interesting me like looking over like what kind of you know what what kind of themes are actually I guess taking shape and, and sort of leading the, the direction of it because you know I don't even realise at the time but sometimes there's there's songs, you know, there's ideas that keep cropping up in songs that I thought, oh wow, I didn't didn't realise I was sing, singing about that so much. <laughs> 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 very cool like, yeah, in terms of like piecing the songs together like you say at the moment then are we going to be hearing sort of more songs before the end of the year would you say or kind of what's going on with that yeah no definitely I think you know we've um, we've got a pretty clear idea of um, a few songs we really want to um, get out before the end of the year that most of these songs we're just jacking to play at, at Ali Pali really so um, yeah, I think there's definitely going to be a bit more music before then. Um, and it's kind of just up to us, really, to get our asses in gear and, <laughs> and get the ball rolling on, you know, videos and, and all that sort of stuff. So, I mean, the way the way we've kind of, uh, you know, been putting out music this this time around, it's just felt so much better than, than the, the last album campaign, uh, where we were sort of at the mercy of our, of our record label then and they were very old school in the sense they wanted to hear every song mastered, you know, not even mixed. It was like, we want to hear every song Blimey. mixed and mastered before we, before we work out what um, order of singles, you know, should be. And, you know, this time around, we've literally just, we've written a song, we dig it, we'll, we'll film a video and, and get it out there. Um, and we've just kind of done it as, as and when songs are finished, which has been an amazing feeling because, you know, you've got something done relatively, yeah, and well, finish and out within a relatively short space of time. So it's still kind of exciting for us to be putting music that we still, you know, feel is new uh, out there. So, yeah, now we've kind of, now we're nearing the end of, of finishing the album. Um, as soon as, like, you know, the, the mix is done that we're happy with. We're just going to try and, you know, get it up online and um, get people listening to it. Oh, man, that's so cool. I mean, so are you kind of finishing up now then? Are you, are you still kind of, are you still pumping out the ideas or is it sort of coming to an end or sort of what's the timeline? Yeah, no, we um, we kind of, I think we've, we we pretty much finished recording now. Um, yeah, our last week, at the end of last week, just before we um, hit Reading and Leeds. Oh, wow. Um, so, so now it's a matter of, you know, just those, those kind of like the final mixes and and getting it all together and getting a track listing and all that all that side of it and, you know, choosing which songs we've recorded a, a few extra that, you know, um, you know, you, you want to get everything out, but it's like getting that, I guess, yeah, piecing it together and make it feel like a whole now because um, so it's the, the hard work hard hard work aspect is that and now it's like the annoying little bitty like <laughs> I'll turn that vocal up here because you can't hear that or you know the guitar's too well, normally the guitar's too quiet if Simon's yeah it's when Simon's mixed on it's just turn the guitar up yeah so uh, <laughs> it's, it's doing all those sort of annoying annoying little jobs now which um, you know uh, has to be done um, and as soon as we, we've got that them ready yeah we'll get some new music out Awesome. So, 2018 release for the album, do you reckon? I think that's, yeah, I think it's looking that way. We haven't got like a date yet, but, you know, I think it's probably looking like a, an early, early part of the year release um, on that side of things. Um, but, yeah, you know, if, it, if it's ready before then, we're just like, let's go. So, <laughs> we've kind of got to talk to our, talk to the label and talk to all the, the powers that be who actually you know kind of run that that side of stuff um and you know they're the ones you can tell us no that's completely out of the question there's no <laughs> way you can you can have it ready for next week so we'll yeah we'll we'll talk to them and then go from there i think amazing uh cool uh, to, just to finish up then uh i promised i'd ask you uh the cowboy will we be seeing more of him 
Um, it really depends. <laughs> we love we love Alan. Alan's his name. Um, the guy who plays the cowboy. And um, yeah, it kind of depends on the next few videos, really, because um, we we were actually talking about this the other day when we were thinking of okay, we we're going to start thinking about the next few videos. And it kind of depends on the tone of the song because, yeah, <laughs> like he can crop up. I find like he can, he can sort of crop up in any, um, basically any brutal riff. It feels <laughs> right. Alan just showing up and like, you know, uh, doing some sort of dance or shooting lasers out of his eyes or, um, yeah, chasing after, to, after bride to bees. Um, but yeah. It, it kind of depends on the tone of the song, I think. So when we work out what our uh, kind of next few singles are that we're shooting videos for, I think then we'll make the call if uh, if the cowboy can feature again. But <laughs> yeah, we we love him. We it kind of feels like everybody pretty in technology felt like a nice sort of cowboy saga trilogy. So <laughs> we might tap it at that, and then maybe sort of bring him out when needs be in, in other suitable moments. So, yeah, to be continued potentially. Awesome. So, yeah, just brilliant stuff. I mean, um, I, I, get, I just love how, how Rob opened up on everything. And it sounds like we're going to be hearing stuff super soon. Like, I could just tell he just wants to get all this stuff out there, like, ASAP. So, um, yeah, I mean, Pretty's one of the songs of the year. Love technology as well. So I just cannot wait to see where this goes because, like I said to him in the chat, it's like about 10 curveballs within one song. So, um, yeah, Tamsin? Judging from what I've seen of them in their recent live shows, um, he said the album that, like, they've thought more about a live environment when they were writing it whilst they were recording it. They want it to be this absolutely huge album that like it's gonna sound massive live and judging from i think i noticed after they came back from america and they played slam dunk there was a change in them um and they like they've always been like a party live band but they like something something clicked in them once they came back from america and their their live shows are just on point at the moment um and so if that's if their live shows are reflecting what the album is going to sound like, we are in for such a treat. Oh, yeah, push pits everywhere. I mean, like, uh, Larry is the word that, that we were both using in the interview. I hope they call it. Guys, please call the album that. It would be amazing. And just that's what I want in this album. I just want this album to be as Larry as these songs they put out. Larry's a brilliant word. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I agree. I, like, Larry is what it is. Like, technology is a really good example of that because that's that came out of nowhere the riff at the end of that oh yeah um but i really like how he says that he wants to keep they want to keep themselves guessing as well and it's like because they're doing it so like on the spur of things and just getting things out when they're ready to go and i like that idea that they're trying to stay excited about what they're doing but also push the boundaries of what they've done before and if you look at the curve of broker like automatic that was just like the most chilled out white trousers like shout out white jeans. Like how how Don Broker. He wears the tightest how, white jeans how, 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 I've ever how, seen. How they didn't spill chocolate down them at any point, I will <laughs> never know. But like now they've done that and then they're heading into this new direction. Mm. And, be, and like being themselves again, it's as Tamsin said, like yeah. in America they were getting like Wars of Death as an opening band yeah. on that tour. Well, that, that you know that that massive war, war of death that we spoke about on the podcast before, and actually chatted to bands about, they did on the Against the Current State Champs and yeah. with Confidence tour. Like that's a moment of 2017, yeah. I think. Yeah, and it's like like when when I spoke to State Champs for our our launch episode, they were saying like it's not often we go on tour with a band and we will watch them every single night. But Don Broco, they did that. They had to watch them every single night just to see what they would do like in their live shows, and every single one was like better than the last yeah which is awesome um, and i know i know i feel like uh, don broker are very kind of hit and miss bands people there are people that don't like them don't get them and then there are people that love them but i think you've very much got to just take them for what they are and just in if you enjoy their music, enjoy it. Like, have a blast. That's what they're about. Definitely. And they're embracing that with this, I think. And I think this is going to be a genuinely weird album in the best possible way. So uh, we just can't wait to hear more. Guys, give us more tunes. We can't wait. Push up squad forever. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. So, Jack. Let's do some listener questions. So, let's begin with Ace Gomez on Instagram, who asked, What's our most anticipated album for 2018? Tamsin. <laughs> okay straight in uh going <laughs> going back 
to pretty much the band I've just spoken about, State Champs. Um, <laughs> we, I mean, they haven't they haven't put out a release date. They haven't really done a lot or said a lot much about it. But the I, I think the plan is to release next year. Um, if they don't. I'm going to send them a very cross tweet. <laughs> just a tweet. <laughs> not hate mail, just a cross no, tweet. No, just be like, guys, I'm not happy about this. I need my pop punk. Please deliver it in spades. Um, yeah, uh, I love State Champs. Everyone knows I love State Champs. Um, Around the World the world and Back was one of the best pop punk albums of the past 10 years. And I am very, very, very excited to see where they go with this next one. Big shout. I'm with uh, Tonight Alive. Uh, Jenna and the boys. I I, just, I don't know. It was I think it was just chatting to them on our launch episode. It, I just I'm so excited to see what they do with this album. And I mean I know like I love parts of Limitless, and I'd kind of like them just to, to like blend everything they've done together. I think they could come up with a total monster. So I just I just don't know what to expect really, and that's the most exciting thing of all. So yeah, cannot wait for that. I'd say at this point, mine's asking Alexandria. Okay, yeah, cool. Um, because I just. After what um, the Black represented for the band going with Danny, not in the fold, and him coming back in and them still having that same mindset, I'm really looking forward to an old school Askin album. Like one where it's just riffs, screaming, maybe synth, and just like back to the basics. And I mean, I like I like myself a bit of a crab core, like, like, like all the best of us do. Can confirm that Jack's crab core moves are... To be witnessed <laughs> by everyone. We'll, we'll put a video up online. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, big up. I reckon that's going to take a lot of people by surprise. Sick. Um, secondly, Paula.fob asks, what's our favourite Sab Jam? Sad Jam, not <laughs> Sam Jam, of Sag Jam. Uh, sad Jam to listen to at the moment. Um, mine is a lady called Julian Baker. And she released an album, Sprained Ankle, L- was it last year? It was either last year or 2015. In 2015, which, yeah. It was 2015, which was the most heartbreaking release ever. It's a pure look out the bus window and hope that the rain on the windows covers your tears. Sort of release. <laughs> um, but the one song on that is Go Home. It's the closing track, completely piano led and... I've seen Julian live, and when she plays, she cries herself because it hurts, like, it hits her so hard. And just this song, it's just the honesty, the, like, just the pureness of it as well. Like, it just gets you every time. It feels like a gut punch. Amazing. I'm going with Crickets by Creeper. Absolute curveball on eternity in our arms. Uh, in your arms, I should I say. Um, when it comes through halfway through, uh, just to hear Hannah take lead vocals, I think she absolutely nailed it. I think it's the best song on the album. I mean, that's no cuss to like Will or any of the rest of the band. I love love that band. But I don't know. I just feel they did something really, really different on that song. And it's ended up my favourite Creepers on Type of Gloom. So um, I'd love to hear more of that side to them. Absolutely brilliant. My sad jam. Um, that sounds like a really like niche thing to put on your toast a, sad ni- a, ni- a niche yeah. condiment <laughs> yeah. like that thing hashtag sad jam um yeah. i am going with the song darling by uk post hardcore band casey um if you haven't listened to casey's debut album yet just do yourself a favor and maybe like even i will let you pause us and go and listen to it and then come back whatever you want to do but make sure you go and listen to that debut album because darling it's like the 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 one song on the album that is really mellow it's really slow it's really dark and it just like you can feel your heart being ripped from your chest like really slowly throughout um it's like it's brutal it's emotional it's delicate in all the right places yet all the guitar lines are really like dramatic and it's just like the entire thing you pretty much just want to stare into your soul and cry um and yeah to finish uh shanae.feeling asks what was our favorite album from 2007 tamsin mayday parade with a lesson in romantics will take to the skies and shikari and mine was bon Iver with Frema Forever Ago. Very folky this week. I mean, I, I, I need he to likes his it. sad jams. I, I, can't, I, I can't be grindcore all the time. <laughs> yeah. There's only two sides to Jack Rogers. It's, grind, it's grindcore and sad jam. <laughs> uh, oh God. Right, shop.rocksound.tv. Uh, it's the last week of the Neck Deep Bundles. Um, 
before our new issue is launched. Um, I've uh, we've seen the way we've been promoting this before. I've been making it sound like they're steaks or something that we're going to throw them away at the end of this week. They are going to be available until they sell out. We're not going to chuck them out at the end of this week, but you should definitely get on them and order them up as quick as you possibly can because they're totally sick. Neck deep cover story, absolutely brilliant. The uh, tumultuous, amazing story of the Peace and the Panic, which you've now all heard and love on the albums of the year, no question. Uh, the Ultimate Bundles have sold out, but the Peace Bundle and the Panic Bundle are both still available. They've got hand-drawn covers, absolutely amazing, by our very own Tom Morgan. Shout out Tom Morgan. Shout <laughs> out Tom Morgan. <laughs> Love you. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Um, but yeah, Panic Bundle includes a hand-signed post to print by the whole band, a bottle opener key ring, a pin badge and custom shape vinyl sticker of their very cool new logo while the peace bundle includes uh, again a bottle opener key ring a pin badge with the peace on it rather than the panic a custom shaped vinyl sticker in a different color of the logo and an exclusive drawstring rucksack designed by uh, the band's very own phil thorpe evans so super super cool lap them up let us know you're buying them and uh, let us know your favorite things with the mag and inside the mag got features with all sorts of things fan questions while she sleeps uh, gospel youth tacker from one okay rock doing my tunes jack you did a uh, a chat with one machine gun kelly mtk i did, I did yeah Ch- uh, chat of the year you revealed last I did, week yeah um, how was it well mainly just because he is a bona fide rock star in my opinion and he lives that lifestyle and he's just the way that he's been 11 years uh, in this game and he's earned his place where he is and just like to hear him talk when and about bridging the gap between the rap world and the rock world and making it work and not fitting in anywhere. And just hearing someone be that open and honest about it, yet still brilliantly confident in the art that they make, it's just read it and get on board with the gunner. So, and he felt godlike. He does feel godlike. Like, uh, quote is a hero, Liam Gallagher. Amazing. Tamsin, is he godlike? Sure. <laughs> Uh, and I did the sweariest interview of all time with Straight From The Path. So uh, check that out. Right, interview two, uh, Rome. One, Alex Adam joined us on the podcast to talk all things album two. We chat a lot about uh, brilliant second albums, you know, the difficult second album, but bands just all over our world are smashing it with them at the moment. Um, so we tried everything Great Heights and Nosedives, which is out next month. And he revealed pretty much everything. If you're a fan of Rome, this is an absolute essential listen. Everything about the album, working with Carl Black, and trying to top Backbone, which was just such a sick debut and so many people loved. So taking it to the next level. And also some uh, some really fun stuff with being best friends with As It Is and Grayscale as well. So um, yeah, this is Alex Adam from Rome. Thank you so much for taking the time, man. Really appreciate it. No, that's cool. Thank you for doing it. Oh man, no, well thank you so much for coming on the podcast uh, I mean, yeah, like, I just want to talk about the album really um, You've got uh, Great Heights and Nose Dives coming out in October um, You recorded with Carl Black yeah. earlier in the year um, How was the experience and how did it differ to, to Backbone? I would say the the writing on Great Heights and Nose Dives was so much more in depth We um, we demoed everything, which is something that we'd never really done before um, You know, with Backbone, we we very much kind of wrote the songs in a full band environment, played them, put a phone in the middle of the room, listened back and went, okay, cool, that song is done. Let's carry on, next song. Um, Whereas this was like, you know, we'd write it acoustically, we'd jam it out with the band, everyone would add their parts, we'd sit down and demo it, and we'd listen through, and we'd come back to it and we'd go, hey, okay, well, that part could be even better, or that part's pointless. And... and, um, we just went way more into depth with every single part, you know, like, okay, well, there's like a bit here where the vocal is missing. So how about we do like a bass part or a lead part there? Um, and I think the music moves a lot more with the vocals uh, as a result of that. But, um, yeah, I would just say it was just a lot more in depth really this time around um, and a lot more thought out. Cool, yeah. Did that come, did a lot of that kind of come through in your and Costello's vocals as well? Because, I mean, like, the inter- obviously you've always had that interplay, but, like, the interplay is really kind of acute, like, with all the hooks on this album. Did that, is that something you really worked heavily on? Yeah, definitely. We, um, we wanted to, you know, I mean, he doesn't have an instrument, so we have to be careful of not doing it too much 50 50 because. <laughs> you know, then he's going to be left not doing anything whilst I'm singing and playing guitar. <laughs> yeah. um, but, but um, yeah, we, we definitely, I think it was something Kyle pushed for because we said, you know, this is kind of our thing. Like, 
it's kind of something that we pride ourselves on, the kind of quick back and forth and the, the rappiness of the vocals and the way that we kind of can get very quick vocal patterns across because there's two of us so we can breathe while the other one's doing something. Um, and I think that's something that Kyle really pushed with us because he, a lot of the times we'd go in with, all right, well, I sing this bit and Alex sings that bit. And he'd kind of sit there and go, okay, well, I think you should do it this way. And I think you should do it way more, you know, way more changey, choppy changey. Um, so I think that that's something that he, he definitely helped along with. Awesome, yeah. Because in terms of in terms of that, and in terms of like the, I guess there's like the musical side of things as well. Um, who are you listening to on this album? I mean, we listen to, you know bands like Blink who have that kind of vocal in play and that sort of thing. Like who who kind of uh, influenced the album the most? Would you say? This is a difficult one because um, I think part of uh, part of this album that, that made it so special for us was that we weren't really listening to music for influence uh, as much. Um, Definitely in the past, we've been like, oh, it'd be so cool to have a song that sounds like this or a song that sounds like this. Um, and I think with this album, we just kind of went in and we just wrote and we didn't consciously kind of refer back to other bands and what they were doing. We just were like, this is what's coming out naturally and this is where we're at as a band without without trying to be something else. Um, I think... I think to answer your question, though, there, we listen to quite a bit of Paramore. Um, we listen to um, yeah, I, I don't know. It, it was it was very it was very kind of let's just write. I think so. You know, whatever we've been listening to recently, I guess would have affected it. But there was no conscious kind of sit down and listen to this band and what can we take from it. Does it feel like you guys have found your sound now? Then. Definitely, yeah, a hundred percent. It feels like whereas before we were like, oh, maybe we want to be this kind of a band, and and we'll try and do every kind of song that we can. You know, I think Backbone was great, and I think that a lot of the songs on there, are, you know, still hold their own. But I think with this album, it's far more focused and far more of a sound. It, it, it has its own sound. And I don't, I don't think that that is necessarily, um, you know, anyone else. I think I think we've really come into our own and, and developed as a band to the point where we have got our own sound now and we, we have kind of found what we want to say and how we want to say it um, through this album. I know we, we went into it with very different idea of how the album would sound. We, we You know, we went in and we discussed it and we thought, all right, well, this next album is going to be like a real dark pop punk album. You know, think like the darker side of Sum 41 um, with like huge rock choruses. And like, it just it just didn't turn out that way at all. It like it very slowly drifted and, and became more of a pop punk record, but like leaning towards pop. Um, you know, and, and I don't think that's a bad thing at all. I just think we went into it not really knowing what we wanted and we came out with more than we could have ever asked for I think very cool I mean in terms of uh, playing fiction being the lead single uh, what was the thinking behind that was that kind of like the best representation of that that kind of sound that you came up with you know there was there was a lot of um, controversy behind that because uh, (laughs) we feel that every song on the album bar maybe one or two could have been singles um, which I think is a really strong place to be, but but obviously everyone likes a different song for a different reason, and um, yeah, it it was not my personal first choice for for the lead single. But that being said, I do now now we've kind of stepped away from it, and it has been the lead single. I do think it was the right choice. It it has everything, like like you say, it's got the back and forth vocals. It starts with lower vocals, which is something that we've done on this album where me and Costello are singing well within our range now. We're not trying to kind of, okay, well, what's the top note you can hit? Okay, sing that note all the time. Um, so it's well within our range. There's the back and forth. It's, it's the kind of, it still sounds like us, but it sounds way more grown up and way more mature and, and uh, you know, developed. Um, and I think that that is kind of the, 
one of the best examples of that on the album. Um, I still think there's a lot to come, and, and you know, some of our favourite songs probably won't even end up being singles. Um, well, they won't, but I think that Playing Fiction definitely did a good job of kind of introducing people to the new Rome, I guess. Definitely, yeah. I mean, so in terms of that, in terms of like some of your personal favourites from for, for the people at home who haven't heard the album yet, what um, what are the particular songs that you're excited for people to hear? Uh, I'm I'm really excited for people to hear uh, Guilty Melody. That's a song that kind of it didn't change that much from from kind of inception to finish, um, and it's just really cool. It's, it's kind of dark, but it also has really light verses. And um, I just love the kind of contrast in that song. And it feels really different for us as well. It feels kind of almost Weezer-ish in a way, um, which is really cool because I would say they're a band that I listen to a lot at the moment. And um, I'm really hyped for people to hear that. I would say as well, I'm very interested to see some reactions for um, one of the songs on there that's called Rich Life of a Poor Man. Mm. That's kind of like the most poppy we've been um, at this stage in our careers and I, it still sounds like us it still sounds great and, and I think that you know you still get the energy but it's really catchy and really I, I don't know I'm just really interested to see how that goes down and, and what people think about that Awesome, yeah, because as well, lyrically, there's uh, there's quite a duality to the album in that it sounds like you were writing about a lot of hardship, but there's a lot of kind of defiance as well and kind of coming out of that. I mean, like, open the album with a live, you know, the hook is literally, you know, we made it out of live. Uh, like, is that is that kind of where you guys were coming from in that sense? Yeah, definitely, 100%. And that's where the album title comes from, Great Heights and Those Guys. It's, it's um, you know, life is full of these fucking insane ups and downs. And um, you, you, it's how you deal with them that kind of defines you as a person. It's, it's not going, okay, well, this is the worst day ever. I'm going to just fucking go to bed and ignore it. <laughs> yeah. It's going, no, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to deal with, I don't want to um, accept this kind of thing and, and moving past it and taking every situation and making the best out of it. Um, and I think, like, that's probably, like, a running theme throughout the album, like you say, that there was a lot that uh, myself and... Um, another member of the band went through last year. Um, we went through a lot. Um, but luckily we did it together. So it kind of, you know, it, it, it made it easier, but it's definitely a theme on the album. It's, you know, we went, we went through a lot, but like you say, in, in a life, we made it out alive. We were better off for it. It just kind of, it's almost telling the story of that and kind of saying, look, if it happens to you, you will get through the other side of it and it, you will be better for it you just need to kind of take it and make it work to your advantage listening back to Backbone as well like we had a bit of a chat about earlier but I mean does this feel kind of like a step up in kind of every way really it's yeah it, insanely so like I just feel you know Backbone was great and it took us all around the world but in comparison to this it it doesn't it doesn't hold a light against it and, and I hope people agree with that I think they will Amazing. So you're feeling super confident about it then? Yeah, really, really confident. I don't think I've felt this confident about a release ever. You know, you, it's hard to say because you're always kind of like hyped on the next thing, but I just, I really do feel like the, the feedback we've had from the few people who've heard it, um, you know, the label, friends in bands, I just really think that this is, this is what we needed to do. This is the step we needed to take. And I think that... Um, I'm very ready to take it now. I've, I'm fed up of having this album in my phone and being the only person who's able to listen, listen to it. <laughs> yeah, no, I can imagine. Actually, I seem to remember seeing a tweet, um, I think it was from the guys in As It Is, saying that they're having a listening party with you guys on your phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was it. Yeah, well, we, we showed them as soon as we started getting even the first mixes back because we're, we're always with them. And uh, yeah, they were, they were super, super nice about it. Amazing. They, they loved it, I think. Oh, I was man. texting Foley the other night. I think he was a bit drunk, but he was getting very emotional about it. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, talking of as it is, I mean, you uh, you did the US tour with them uh, a few months back, along with Grayscale. Um, tell us about that. How was that? It was amazing. Yeah, I, I loved all the bands on that bill. Sleep on it, Grayscale, um, as it is, and I think there was a band called Capstan as well, who were like this riffy techie band from mm. America. They were they were amazing. Um, 
And uh, yeah, it, it was a really cool tour. We love touring with As It Is anyway because it it doesn't feel like we're on tour with another band. It feels like okay, the family is back together again, and we kind of are one big unit. And you know, we write different songs and we have a different name to them, but we're the same band. We're we're all kind of one, and everyone kind of chops and changes and rides with each other. And you know, it doesn't doesn't feel like there's two bands on tour. It feels like one. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah I, I I love those guys. I think their new record's amazing, and Grayscale as well, just insane. They, they're so good. I, I love that record that they've just put out, and um, yeah, it, it was a really fun tour. Amazing, yeah, because I actually spoke to Colin from Grayscale uh, maybe like a month before the tour started, and um, he was right. saying how excited he was about it, and then to kind of see all you guys on Twitter and social media and everything, you know, like all, th- all, all the whole lot of you kind of saying how brilliant everything was, and like, you know, like what a mates club it was and everything, it was really cool, so yeah, it looked uh, yeah, pretty definitely. amazing tour. Those guys, the guys in Grayscale are absolute weirdos, just like us, like, <laughs> we're we we pride ourselves on not taking anything too seriously and i think they they definitely do the same because they're just absolutely mental in, in the best way possible though yeah yeah <laughs> amazing um so so once the album's out there like what's the kind of plan is it going to be more touring and just getting these new songs to everyone possible yeah that's it it's just show as many people as we possibly can all over the world tour you know headline the album hopefully start to headline in some territories we haven't done before. Um, you know, we're headed back to Australia for Unify Festival in January, which actually we just found out last night sold out. So that's, that's insane as well. Um, I just think, yeah, just, just playing the songs and really stepping it up live as well. I think we're going to try and kind of hone in on, on uh, the performance and, and the production and, and really kind of, step it up as a band basically take it to the next level and, and hopefully you know see the results of that awesome stuff yeah just absolutely brilliant chat with Alex uh, really fun to kind of delve into that album I think there's a lot to say uh, and he just sounds so excited and so passionate it was always the best thing when you're talking to bands um, about what his band are doing and what they've done and like what's to come especially I think he just sounds so confident about the album I mean Jack what are you saying we've heard the album what are you saying I think the album's brilliant I think it's a massive step up for the band uh, especially in the very crowded marketplace that is pop punk, uh, they aren't settling for second best. Like they're changing things up and trying to break away from the pack, which a lot of people do kind of lump them in with. Um, I think the biggest thing is when he's talking about the he was talking about the songs which he's looking forward to people hearing and like going, oh, this is probably the poppiest we've been. Or like I know there's no dramatic differences, but com- changing what people expect of you is a huge risk. Uh, for a lot of bands and I think it just sounds like they don't want to settle for what people expect of them which I think is a really cool thing to be able to do and especially an album too as well which like like the sophomore is harder than the debut and it always will be it's it's kind of the make or break but to be doing things the way they are and developing the way they are like it's just it's just gonna keep getting better for the band and he is, he's just such a happy, clappy chappy, isn't he? He is, like, yeah. Where, like, just, you can hear it in his voice. It's almost like he's bouncing up and down while he's talking. It's like, he just can't <laughs> keep still. Like, you hope he's, like, out in public so people are looking at him <laughs> on the phone rather than the comfort of somewhere. Um, and, yeah, just, I also do love their relationship with uh, As It Is. As It Is, brilliant, oh, yeah. So which, good. Yeah, and yeah. just how, like, fans take it on board so much more than they do because they've just gone ah bugger off as it is you, <laughs> uh, you silly sausages or whatever and then the fans just take it as like oh you rate each other go on gang fight gang fight <laughs> yeah, yeah like that they want it's basically they want a pop punk version of the fight scene in Anchorman oh yeah like they're yeah. just like just in an alley somewhere yeah. and then just get grayscale in and then broadside might come along yeah just for a yeah laugh. And then, like... State champs ride in on unicorns yeah. or something. <laughs> <Yeah, state laughs> champ- like in a Black Hawk helicopter. <laughs> yeah. Just come down from the sky and just yeah. go, guys, just... You're not fighting without us. Yeah. But, yeah, I think it's it's just a really nice... It just shows how good the community is at the minute. And it's 
it's always nice to know that UK pop punk's doing well. Totally, yeah, super solid. I mean, the album's sick. I, mean, I said to uh, I said to Alex after we finished chatting, it's an absolute banger. Uh, you know, it's got a real defiance to it. I mean, it's kind of like the Neck Deep album. I think it was born from some very troubled times. Uh, and like I said, they kind of re- really used music as a therapy to kind of push through that and kind of come out the other side. And to hear him so pumped now as well to talk about it and to kind of tell me all these things was so, so cool to hear. Uh, Tamsin? I mean, on a side note, if you don't follow Alex on Twitter, then you need to change that immediately because he is one of the funniest people ever. Like, his tweets are just comedy gold. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, they is is they've taken their time with this album. They've been, like, touring non-stop since their debut came out. Um, and I feel like they've learned a lot as a band. So, like, I remember seeing them at Old Blue Last, which is, what, like, 100 capacity, if that? It's tiny. It's yeah, a well tiny, small. tiny venue. Their car had broken down. They didn't know how they were going to get home. They were kind of just like, I feel like they started out as like just some mates that were like jamming. We're like, oh, we'll just see what happens with this. And now they're literally like all over the world, signed to Hopeless. It's amazing. About to put out the second album. And I feel like they've really, really grown up together and as a band. And this album is, like he said, like it's, um, they, they feel like they've finally found their sound. And they've actually, they've taken the time to write an album properly rather than just playing it into a mobile phone and seeing what the outcome is. Props to those guys. I really, really hope it works out for them. Definitely, yeah. They are such funny guys as well. And they like, I, I did yeah. um, such, like kind of the penultimate firing line that we used to do uh, when we kind of like brought fans in with bands. And uh, they are so funny, like, especially Alex and uh, Costello's dynamic. Yeah, they, they bounce off each other really yeah, well. They do. They? <laughs> but yeah, like I, th- I think they're great guys and I love like their friendships with Grayscale and as it is. And like, I yeah, as Jack said, the community right now with this kind of new breed the pop bunk is really really cool and i love just kind of seeing it flourish and everyone just become pals definitely yeah yeah yeah. and the album is absolutely great like if you're a rome fan out there or just a fan of pop punk and you know rock music get excited because you've got to check this out bangers everywhere awesome so uh our shouts so we spoke to rob damiani earlier in the show from don broco uh so based on uh, their instant classic pretty uh, that came up this year we're gonna go with um our personal pick for the best party pit starter I'm going to dole this out to Jack first. I'm going to say uh, BYOB by System of a Doubt. Yeah, banger. Uh, mainly because like the way that I judged this was when I'm out having a few shandies um, and I'm ripping up the dance floor, um, I kind of like wait for, like judge it on the first few seconds of what's going on. And when that <laughs> guitar comes in. <laughs> Your tongue was just doing insane <laughs> things just so then. fast. <laughs> <laughs> like you just go ah oh! and then suddenly like pit breaks out and whatever and jack's you, running around crab pouring all yeah, over just, the place yeah just on my own like no one else is doing it but it's just it's that minute when when that guitar kicks in you just go mm! and then just go for it every single time guaranteed killer shout um i'm it's just like a don broco like special um i'm gonna go with don broco i'm going with thug workout um, i mean obvious isn't yeah, it really man like i just couldn't go with anything else i tried to go with something else but i couldn't I mean, like at, at slam dunk this year when they played thug workout i was the only one around me to do push-up squad and like there was a video on instagram of me doing it <laughs> and, Jack and then by himself just on my own and it's like, it's like i'm doing it you and bobby d like yeah, yeah, yeah. but i mean like i wasn't even doing them very well and it it's just me kind of going slow with everyone else around just me. Like, just looking, going. Just going, what the hell is this guy doing? Yeah. They come, didn't on, know come on, guys, join happens. in. If you don't know what happens with Thug Workout, just, I don't know, YouTube some live videos or Do something. It. It's like the most insane thing, but... It, oh, it's incredible! It's a field of it. it's a field of one that song, and it? it's never it's yeah. never been and like generally the actual official. I use that term loosely. Uh, music video for it is also a sight to be seen. It really is. I, I want Rob to bring back his um, his, his World War Two pilot Tash for Ali Pally, <laughs> and then get and then get in the, and then get in the push pit. Yeah, make it happen, Sounds guys. Good. Uh, my party pit starter is Break Stuff by Limp Biscuit because similarly to, to Jack's reasons, um, whenever that comes on at like a silent disco or a club night or whatever I may be at in which Limp Biscuit will appear, um, particularly if, I, if I'm with my friend Amy, it's, it became like our song of last year's summer because every single festival we went to, every like after party or whatever, they always played it and just screaming like, I want to break your fucking face tonight into, 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 into each of us <laughs> face. Into each other's faces <laughs> and then just going, yeah. and just like losing our minds. Um, yeah. 
that's that's it's incredible every time it comes on yeah even if it's in the morrisons or something <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> baskets yeah. down going cans are everywhere yeah. lobbing bread at the bakers oh god the poor nans around yeah. you <laughs> sick shout so yeah. so good um, so yeah amazing so that's our shouts uh get mosh in let us know your faves uh shop.roxanne.tv so neck deep bundles are still available we're going to be launching our new issue very very soon uh but you can get these the uh ultimate bundles have now gone but the peace bundle and the panic bundle are still both very much available so get on those uh if you want a hand signed poster print by the band uh get on the panic bundle uh, signed by the entire band you also get a pin badge a bottle opener key ring and uh, a custom shaped vinyl sticker of their new logo and the peace bundle you'll get an exclusive draw in rucksack by the band's very own phil thorpe evans super super cool really really nice along with everything else that you get in the panic bundle as well so get one get the other get them both um they've also got very cool hand-drawn covers by as a second shout out of the show our very own tom morgan designer rock sound designer so uh really really lovely stuff Get on those. Let us know your favourite features. As I say, you want to read about MGK being godlike, you got to get on it. Sweary interviews with Straight From The Path. The return of Saint, uh, the gospel youth uh, attacker from 1OK Rock doing his My Tunes, all sorts of stuff. So get on it. Get involved. Let us know you're buying these up. And uh, yeah, let us know what you want to see more of. To uh, to talk about our Scuzz TV show as well before we go. On Once a Day on Scuzz, it's an accompaniment to the magazine. Um, so it includes, it's bands that are featured in the magazine currently, along with bits of information. So you can kind of read along, watch along. And uh, it's this perfect way, essentially, that if you read about a band you don't know in the current magazine, you can uh, check it out once a day and see what that band are all about, you know, what's going on with them, their new tunes. And uh, you can basically see bits of information as well so get watching that get reading uh we've also launched some spotify playlists super super cool we've got all sorts of things it's emo new metal rs classics pop punk uh a personal favorite as i say we mentioned the past couple of weeks pop sound uh absolute pop bangers all sorts of stuff so follow us on spotify at rock sound spotify playlists uh we're going to have more exclusives going up from podcast interviews from all sorts of other interviews going up online so be on our website rocksound.tv and uh, yeah, follow us on Instagram at Rock Sound. Follow us on Twitter at Rock Sound. Talk to us. Uh, we'll be talking back to you. So if you want to chat music, you want to just chat random stuff, chat about the show, chat about the interviews, talk to us and we'll talk to you. Let us know what you want to hear, what you want to see. Uh, it's been absolutely amazing. Uh, next week, uh, we teased him last week, but we are going to have, you're all asking for him, Mr. Patty Walters of As It Is on the show. Cannot wait for that. So get excited. Uh, guys, thank you so much. It's been really good. It's all right, mate. We've had a laugh, haven't yeah. we? We have. All right. It's been a good Can time. It's been really, really good. Um, so, yeah, talk to us, guys, and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye.